Okay, so let's talk about <coughs> what is a capacitor. So a capacitor, a basic uh, structure, would consist of two metal plates separated by an insulator in between. So the insulator in between here, we call it a dielectric. Okay, and this insulator, uh, you can make of different materials. One, uh, it could even be air, because uh, air is normally a good insulator. But the capacitors that we usually see, uh, in like your living skills last time, right? You will notice that it's cylindrical, right? Something like this, right? Uh, with two legs, uh. So why is it cylindrical? Because they just take this two here and just roll it up. That's why you will get cylinder. Lah. So they roll it up to save space. But if you open up it, you open it up, you will get this. So how does your uh, so what does your capacitor do? You can say two thing, uh, three things. Uh. You can say you use to separate charge, you can use to store energy and to smoothen and rectify AC. Lah. Now last time uh, they used to accept store charge, uh, but lately they have mentioned that uh, they want you to be more specific. It means it's not really storing charge, it only separates charge. So we're going to see uh, why it is considered to not to store charge, but to separate charge. But the funny thing is, right, they will still ask you the quantity, like what is the charge stop. So if it doesn't store charge, why do we call it storing charge? Because by separating the charges, it gives you an illusion that it is storing charge. So this is how uh, it, it works. Lah. So let's say I connect uh, the capacitor here to a power supply uh, and we uh, close the switch. Now originally, this is negative and this is positive, right? Uh? So meaning to say that this point here, this terminal here is um, have excess electrons and these two initially, uh, the two plates of a capacitor, by the way, the symbol of the capacitor is two parallel plates, uh, say equal length. For cell, one long, one short, but for capacitors, both equal length, right? Uh? So if for a capacitor, uh, initially the plates are neutral so then the electrons will move from negative plate to neutral because neutral is higher potential right? so when the electrons flow from here to here it will cause this plate to be negatively charged so the first electron that comes here no problem nothing stops it from flowing but once the first electron reaches this plate it becomes negatively charged the second electron that wants to come is a bit hard already right? okay but we come to it later lah when the first electron reaches here, it causes this plate to be negatively charged, but this electron cannot flow across to the other side. Why? Because there's a dielectric in the middle. So what will happen instead is one electron from this opposite plate will be repelled by the negative plate here. So one of the electrons will leave and go back here. So when this, elec when this electron leaves this plate, this plate becomes positively charged. So the next electron that comes here will find it a bit harder to move because now he has to overcome the repulsion. But if he can overcome, he will come here. And then he become even more negative and another one will leave. So this will keep happening. Huh? So more and more electrons come here, more and more electrons will leave. So the funny thing is, even though the capacitor is supposed to have infinite resistance, infinite resistance because it's a dielectric. Huh? So no current can actually flow through it, right? Not? So, but if you put an ammeter right in the circuit here in series, you will actually get a current reading. So there's one old passive question that asks you this. Um, why is it, even though the capacitor is considered to have infinite resistance, but yet your emitter can still detect a current? That means, why is there a current still flowing even though the, the capacitor has infinite resistance? So the answer is because the current is flowing, by the way, fl electrons flow from negative to positive, but current is flowing from positive to negative. Blah. But the, the, the thing is, the electrons are flowing not because it is flowing through the capacitor, but the electrons are flowing by repulsion at the capacitor. So one electron comes here, repel another capacitor. So it repels another electron of the capacitor. So it's not the same electron that travels across. Okay? So... What will happen is, they will keep on flowing here and here, but when will it stop? That's the question. So some people say when you run out of electrons, which is impossible. Lah. So when will it stop flowing is you need to understand the, how electrons behave. Electrons which are negative will flow from a lower to a higher potential. So when it stops flowing, it means that the potential at this point must be the same as the potential at this point. Then it will stop flowing. Similarly, the electrons will also stop flowing from here to here when the potential at this point equals the potential at this one. 
So therefore, we can conclude uh, when this potential equals to this potential and this potential equals this potential, then this PD must be the same as this PD. So in other words, when the when if you if you use a nine volt cell, the capacitor will stop charging when it also reaches nine volts. So you can conclude whatever PD you con connect your capacitor across, your capacitor will reach that PD. How long does it take to be fully charged? Less than a second. Very, very short time. Why? Because the capacitor cannot store a lot of charge, right? which will come to it next time, next part. Huh? So you will only take less than a second. Okay? Fractions of a second. So then let's look at what happens now. So which means to say, okay, when uh, it's fully charged, your capacitor will have uh, one side will be positive and one side will be negative right now. So if this is negative Q, this other side will be positive Q. So how much charge is considered to be stored on this capacitor? Is it Q? Is it zero? Or is it to Q? Now let me tell you something. Huh? Why they said that you didn't really store any charge is because your capacitor, uh, one plate gained Q, but one plate lost Q. So overall, did your capacitor gain any charge? So that means uh, it doesn't really store charge. It actually separates. That means it, it, makes, it brings your electrons from this plate to the other plate. That's it. That's why it's called separation of charge. But it gives you an illusion of charge. Though, because if I connect this capacitor across a lamp, the capacitor will discharge through the lamp and light it up. So it seems like the charge is coming from the capacitor. So what is the charge that is considered to be stored? Okay, what do you think? Is it Q, negative Q, or, sorry, is it Q, 0, or 2Q? Alright, so let's see uh, how, to, how to determine. Uh. Next slide. Okay, so now remember, uh, we said that one charge should be negative Q, one charge is positive Q. So how much charge is considered to be stored? So the best way is to actually discharge uh, the capacitor through another uh, lamp. Uh. So let's see. Uh. So let's say you've got two, the two plates here. One is positive Q, one is negative Q. So what we do is we connect across the lamp. Because you see, uh, in order to find out how much charge is seemingly stored in the capacitor, is by observing how much charge will flow through the lamp before the capacitor is fully discharged. So how much charge will flow through the lamp? Huh? So that's the idea. So now let's look at this plate here, which is negative Q. If you want it to be neutral, how much charge must flow out? Q, negative Q, right? Huh? So this negative Q will flow through the lamp and will reach here. Now originally this had positive Q, so when you give it negative Q, what happens? It becomes neutral. So therefore, how much charge has flowed to the lamp? Q. So the charge stored is Q. So therefore, always remember, when they sometimes they will use the term the charge stored in the capacitor. Sometimes they say the charge stored on one plate of the capacitor. Sometimes they will say the charge stored on either plate of the capacitor is let's say one coulomb. It actually means the same thing. The total charge stored is still one coulomb. So don't think that when they say charge stored on one plate of capacitor is one coulomb, is you assume or oh, therefore must be two. No, it's still one coulomb. The charge stored on one plate of capacitor is considered the same as the charge stored on the whole capacitor. All right. Now, next one you will talk about uh, what determines uh, how much charge can be stored in your capacitor, lah. Uh. So, so how much charge can be stored in the capacitor is given by the formula for capacitance, which is. C equals to Q over V. So, capacitance, the definition is the charge stored per unit PD. That means for every 1 volt across the capacitor, how much charge can be stored? So, the unit will be farad. Alright, in the short form is F. Lah. Okay, now usually, typical values of capacitance rarely exceed 1 farad. That means for every 1 volt of the uh, PD across a capacitor, rarely will you get 1 coulomb. Most of the time, like for example, if the size of your capacitor is, like the, is a tiny size like this, you will actually get in picofarad. Alright? A bit bigger, like the size of, a, let's say, a small water bottle, 
you probably get like milo, milli farad. Okay, so one farad capacitor is huge. Huh? It's like maybe um, the size of a, like a cooking oil a 5 kg container. So that's how big it is. So therefore, capacitors cannot separate charge or they sell seemingly store charge a lot uh, effectively or efficiently one. So therefore, we cannot like use it to like save excess electricity because you see, uh, one of the problems uh, with generation of electricity uh, by your uh, electric electricity generation board like for example TNB, right, is they must always generate more than what the consumers use. So that in case there's a sudden surge in demand, let's say suddenly everybody decides to turn on the aircon at the same time, when they normally don't do it, then if your power that you supply is not enough, then from the formula P equals to VI, the power is not enough for everyone, so everybody's voltage will drop. There will be a voltage drop, which can damage your appliance. So in order to make sure there's always enough power, they always generate more than and more than what they currently people are using up. But when people don't use it, they actually just lose it as heat now. So some people say, why don't I just store this electricity? There are two ways. Huh? Some people say use cells, but that will be very expensive. They say, oh, why don't capacitors? Because it's just metal plates anyway. There's no chemical. But again. You cannot store a lot of charge because as I said, you need some very, very huge capacitors then. So therefore, you cannot store charge a lot. Okay? Now, then let's look at about um, why some capacitors can store more charge, why some capacitors can store less charge for the same PD. That means why some have higher capacitance and why have why have some have some have lower capacitance. Now the formula for capacitance is actually um Another formula, but it is not in your syllabus, lah, which is actually C equals to uh, epsilon A, uh, A over D. So the epsilon is just a constant, uh, which is actually, remember your permittivity. So if you are using A, then E is a permittivity of L. So A is the area of each of the plate. Remember, we have two plates. Right now. So each of the plate, the area is A. And D will be the separation between them. So let's say maybe I take from center to center the separation. Maybe it's like 3D, you can't really see. So it's actually the separation between them. So the bigger the area of the plates, means you can store more charge. Alright, therefore your capacitance is higher. But your separation smaller means that they're closer together. So it's easier for you to repel the electrons, right? So therefore you will get higher capacitance. That's why I say Typical sizes of one farad will be very very big, okay. So um, so that is capacitance lah. Okay, now another thing you must know uh, is the meanings of the marking markings on your capacitors lah. So what you will typically see on every capacitor is definitely the capacitance value, plus a voltage next to it lah or below it lah. So the capacitance here obviously will tell you the capacitor the capacitor. But what does the voltage tell you? Some people say it is the optimum voltage. Some people say it's a minimum voltage. Some people say it's a maximum voltage. So what it actually represents is the maximum voltage you can apply across it. That means you can apply any voltage you want up to 25 volts. What happens when you apply more than 25 volts is remember your two plates, your two metal plates are actually separated by a dielectric which is an insulator. So what will happen is, in your dielectric, which is in the region here, somewhere here, so what will happen is, if the PD is too high, then the dielectric will break down and it will cease to be an insulator. That means it will start to conduct electricity. So why will your dielectric conduct electricity when the voltage is too high? Because if one plate is positive, the other one is negative, then the nucleus of the atom will be attracted to the negative plate, the electrons will be attracted to the positive plate. So when the PD is too high, that means the force on these two things are electrons and your nucleus are too big, then you will get stripped off. When the electrons get stripped off the atom, the electrons will flow one side, nucleus will flow one side, it will knock the other electrons out, it will cause a chain reaction like a 
like a, a ionization so that everything can conduct electricity. So when your dielectric fails, your capacitor will fail because how your capacitor seemingly stores charge is by separating the charge. If you cannot separate charge anymore, then you will just discharge across the dielectric. You cannot separate it anymore. Okay? So, when they ask you for the meaning of the 4,700 microfarad here, so you must refer to the uh, values as well. So, you will say uh, 4,700 microfarad uh, microcoulombs of charge is stored on either plate of capacitor with a PD of 1 volt is applied across it. And then you must say 25 volts is the maximum TPD that can be applied across a capacitor before the dielectric breaks down and ceases to be an insulator. Now, one thing you need to understand about capacitance of a capacitor is that it will not change if you use a different voltage. That means even if I don't use 25 volts, I use 10 volts. The capacitance is still 4,700 microfarad. So what will change? If you use the formula C equals to Q over V, when you change the voltage, the charge stored will decrease, but the capacitance must be the same. So you use smaller voltage, you store less charge. You use higher voltage, you store more charge. But capacitance will always be the same. Capacitance of a capacitor is the property of the capacitor that doesn't depend on PD. Right? It's something like the resistance of a resistor. If you have a 1000 ohm resistor, no matter what cell you connect across, it will still be 1000 ohm resistor. So it's something like that. Huh? Alright, now certain capacitors move mainly uh, the bigger capacitors, uh, which is like millifarad and all those, they will have polarity. Alright, the like microfarad here also got polarity, but very, very small capacitors, like picofarad, sometimes have no cap polarity. If there's a polarity, they will show the markings here. Can you see this one? This looks like a negative. So this is a negative terminal, so the opposite must be a positive terminal. So why you must know this is because when you want to connect to a cell, you must connect this part to the negative terminal of your cell and this part you must connect to the positive terminal of the cell. If you connect wrongly, your dielectric may be spoiled because some dielectrics also have a polarity one. You can, must connect correctly. Okay? So, the next thing is to uh, derive the formula for capacitors in parallel. So, the derivation is compulsory. Eh? So, how do you derive? We use a bit of a uh, common sense. Huh? You know the co the typical formula <coughs> for capacitance is C equals to Q over V. So if you want to derive the formula for capacitance in parallel, you will need to start off with an equation. Like something equals something plus something and all that. Huh? So our final uh, formula is in terms of C. So we either start your derivation by adding the charge or the voltage always. Huh? So for capacitors in parallel, what will add up? Is it the voltage of all of them will add up to give you total voltage or is it the charge in every capacitor add up to give you total charge? Obviously, because they're connected in parallel, all will have the same voltage. So therefore, you don't add voltage. So you must be adding charge. So that's how you start the derivation. You will say the total charge stored is the charge stored here, here, here. Because, think about it, the electrons come out here, some will go here, some will go here, some will go here. Let's say two electrons come here, three electrons come here, four electrons come here, then you got total nine electrons here. So the total charge is, let's say, nine electrons, so therefore we use this formula. Lah. So, once we reach here, then we need to convert to C, right? Lah. So then your Q equals to CV. Lah. But the good news is, because all of them are parallel, they have the same voltage, so the total charge dot is just C, which is the uh, total capacitance. Uh, I show you actually. Uh, I'm supposed to write here C T times your total voltage must be equals to C one V one plus C two V two plus C three V three. So what it means is the total capacitance times the total voltage will give you the total charge dot which is equals to the capacitance here times the voltage here, then the capacitance here times the voltage here plus the capacitance here times the voltage here. But because all three of them have the same voltage, then the voltage can cancel. And because it's also equals to this voltage, huh? so then you get the total capacitance equals to C1 plus C2 plus C3, which means to say that this formula for capacitors in parallel will be the same as the formula for resistors in series. So you just have to add up their capacitance together. Lah. Okay? 
Next is to derive the formula for capacitors in series. So once again, we will need to um, start off with the equation for capacitance, which is C goes to Q over V. So of course, our final formula is in terms of C, but we need to start off with either Q or V. La. So when you connect capacitors in series, what adds up is the voltage. All right, so the voltage here, V1 plus V2 plus V3 must give you the total voltage. So therefore, this is your equation. Ah. Now, there's something about capacitors in series that is a bit unusual. Ah. So you, you see what happens. Ah. Now, when the electrons come out from the negative terminal of your cell, it will come to the first capacitor. So let's say it stores a charge of negative Q. Then the opposite must be positive Q, right? Ah, because Q would leave this plate. So Q will leave this plate, reach here, so this also becomes negative Q. So then it will repel the same amount of charge to so become positive Q. So then this will flow here, so this is negative Q. Then this will flow out, this is positive Q. So what you will notice first of all, is even though all the capacitors in series have different capacitance, when you connect them in series, they will end up storing the same charge. Because charge is conserved. That means you cannot have more charge coming here, and then less charge repelling here. So it must be the same charge that arrive and repel, arrive and repel, arrive and repel. So each of them you'll notice will be negative Q, positive Q, negative Q, positive Q, negative Q, positive Q. So how much would you consider the total charge stock to be? Is it Q or is it 3Q? So remember the technique, uh, if you want to see how much charge is stored, you must see how much charge will flow as it discharges through a lamp. So if I were to connect the three capacitors together and I connect it to a lamp, alright, so remember uh, the values here. So this is negative Q, positive Q, negative Q, positive Q, negative Q, yeah, positive Q, alright, so how much charge must flow out of this plate to be neutral? Q, right? Now. So Q will flow out. So when it flows to this side, this was initially positive Q. So you give it negative Q, it becomes neutral, right? Now. This is also neutral, right? Now. So then this negative Q will flow to this positive Q. So both also neutral. Then this negative Q will flow through the to, uh, to this positive Q, also both neutral. So that means that's it. Uh. So how much charge has flowed through your lamp? Q. So the total charge stored when they are connected in series is equal to the charge stored on each capacitor. So it's not 3Q, it's just Q. So why is it important to know? Because you're going to continue derivation. Uh. When you continue your derivation, remember we have this? So your V is Q over C, right? Uh. So when you write as Q over C, you notice that V1 will be Q over C1, V2 is Q over C2, and V3, Q over C3, all same charge. And the total charge stored is also Q, which is the same as each of them. So the total voltage will be Q over CT. So we substitute this, V as Q over CT, V1 as Q over C1, and V2, uh, which is from here, as Q over C2, V3 is Q over C3, all the Q can cancel. So you'll get this formula, which is similar to resistors in parallel. So capacitors in series have the same formula as resistors in parallel. They're always opposite. Which means to say the same shortcuts that you used for resistors in parallel, you can use also for capacitors in series. Like what shortcuts? For example, remember when we had, like, let's say, four resistors in parallel, all 100 ohm. Now, the total resistance shortcut is 100 over 4. So the same thing, if you have four capacitors in series, all 100 millifarad, the total capacitance is 100 over 4. You can do the same thing instead of doing this. Huh? Alright?